Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Novel, this edition's top stories. St. Lucians urge to take the necessary precautions as regional authorities warn of dengue outbreaks in 2020. The National COVID-19 Response Telethon Committee approves first beneficiaries. And St. Lucians provided an opportunity to acquire residential and commercial property at a reasonable cost. The Ministry of Health and Wellness have indicated that St. Lucia has recorded an increased number of cases of dengue fever in 2020 when compared to 2019. The public is urged to take the necessary precautions to prevent mosquito breeding as regional bodies have warned that dengue outbreaks are expected in 2020. Anisia Antoine begins our broadcast. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has launched its Vector Awareness Week of Activities to sensitize and engage the public on the importance of source reduction as an effective means of vector control and prevention of vector-borne illnesses. Dengue fever, together with associated dengue hemorrhagic fever, is one of the most common vector-borne viral diseases affecting humans. Aedes aegypti, the urban yellow fever mosquito, is also the principal dengue-carrying vector. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is urging members of the public across the island to take the necessary steps to ensure that the population of the Aedes aegypti mosquito is contained. Dr. Michelle Fossois is a national epidemiologist. The mosquitoes, as previously indicated, they live among humans. Um, they live in fresh water. They live in our homes and um, they are daytime feeders. So when you get a bite from a mosquito, you usually look at um, the mosquito and see these white lines on the legs and during the day it tends to be the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Um, dengue is found throughout the tropics um, and it's mainly affected by um, rainfalls and humidity. So you find in areas where you have high levels of rainfall, you tend to get more breeding of the mosquitoes, as well as in um, places that have, um, or with rapid urbanization, places that have developed suddenly and do not have the measures in place to control waste disposal, etc. The national epidemiologist noted that there has been an increase in the number of cases compared to last year, with 41 cases of dengue having been recorded to date. Dr. Fasua also noted that regional authorities have warned that dengue outbreaks should be expected in 2020. We've also noted for this year to date um, that the age group most affected would be the 5 to 9. So our kids are being affected, followed by the, the age group 10 to 14 years. Um, but there has, no been, there has not been any difference in the sexes. Um, the areas that we have noted with highest prevalence, and that is not just numbers, but based on the population of these areas, we have um, noted that the areas of Raidwe, um, Mon Road, Castries City in general, Millet, Old Victoria Road, Monier, and Tuapito areas have the highest prevalence of cases of dengue reported to the Ministry of Health. Dr. Glenford Joseph, a medical officer in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, highlighted the importance of taking the necessary precautions to prevent the spread of dengue as the dengue virus and COVID-19 share similar symptoms. You can have what is called the coexistence in country and the co-infection where one person is impacted by both the COVID and dengue as observed in other countries. As a result, it is important for us to take all measures to prevent the transmission or spread of dengue and COVID-19. If you think, based on your symptoms, that you have either dengue or COVID-19, it is important that you take the necessary steps, the necessary measures, protecting against the transmission of COVID-19 while you seek medical advice. The Ministry of Health and Wellness continues to encourage individuals to maintain the public health and social measures that have been put in place to ensure the health and safety of the public. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The Telethon Committee has begun issuing proceeds from the National COVID-19 Response Telethon. 
the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and the St. Lucia Hospitality and Tourism Association are the first approved applicants to receive checks to go toward their respective efforts during the COVID-19 pandemic. Jesse Leos tells us more. A check of $267,000 has been issued by the Telethon Committee to pay for expenses related to the National Meals Program. The initiative is a public and private sector collaboration that has seen nearly 19,000 hot meals being prepared and distributed to those in need since the pandemic forced the closure of the country and displaced many lives and livelihoods. Spearheading agency, the St. Lucia Hospitality and Tourism Association, SLHTA, expresses thanks to the private sector partners for responding to urgent need. My thanks also to the private sector who extended very generous credit lines. Uh, the project started sometime in April, um, wrapped up a number of weeks after that, and still they were patiently waiting um, for these funds to be made available. And so I really thank them for digging deep and for standing by St. Lucia when we needed them the most. So my, my heartfelt thanks to both SLHDA members and non-members alike from the private sector community who gave generously. Thank you very much for the check, and I assure you that it will be disbursed with haste. Aziz adds that the true heroes of the National Meals Program are the volunteers, hospitality workers, uniformed brigades, volunteer St. Lucia, and members of the general public who selflessly braved the uncertainty surrounding COVID-19, showing up in kitchens to prepare meals and distribute to those in need. The National Meals Program, launched on Easter Sunday, forms part of the Social Stabilization Plan announced by Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chasney. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force is another recipient of telethon proceeds. $34,000 has been approved for the procurement of personal protective equipment for police officers. Expressing thanks, the Acting Commissioner of Police, Milton Daisy, accepted the check on behalf of the RSLPF. So I'm pleased to receive this check, which would go a very long way in purchasing very needed personal protective equipment for the members of the RSLPF. As everyone know, we are on the front line from day one. We are still there and um, I want them to continue to be there. That is the officers. And um, I would not like to see officers serving members of the public and are not prepared. And that is in terms of having the personal protective equipment, which includes um, face shields, the face mask, the sanitizers and so on because you never know in general policing who you are going to encounter. Finber Cotter, accountant in the Ministry of Tourism, handed over these first check disbursements from the National COVID-19 Response Telethon. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Donalyn Vite, assures transparency in the process of approving and disbursing proceeds of the telethon. What the Ministry has done in the administration of those funds was to set up a small committee which has been sanctioned by the Cabinet of Ministers. And this committee is responsible for receiving, screening, and approving, um, in principle, all of the applications will come before the Ministry of Tourism to ensure consistency and, and congruence with the intention and the principle behind the, the collections of the fund. The checks were handed over in a live presentation on NTN, Monday, 3rd August, 2020. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. St. Lucia's premier investment promotion agency, Invest St. Lucia, is making good on its promise to give every St. Lucia an opportunity to acquire ownership of residential and commercial property at a reasonable cost. During its rebranding in 2019, the entity highlighted a number of projects to be rolled out including several residential developments geared towards engaging nationals and creating opportunities for employment, ownership and investment locally. Anisia Antoine tells us more. Invest St. Lucia remains dedicated to enriching the lives of citizens by giving them a chance to acquire ownership of residential and commercial property at a reasonable cost. During the agency's rebranding exercise in 2019, ISL fashioned new strategic statements towards socio-economic development in St. Lucia. This includes developing programs that enable land ownership by St. Lucians in order to improve the socio-economic return on assets. 
ISL's contributions to land development were repeatedly underscored in Prime Minister Alan Chastney's 2020-2021 budget address, referencing land and rationalization on the agency's lands, as well as three fully serviced developments in Boisjoli, Beauchamp and La Fague. For the fully serviced developments, ISL covers road infrastructure, utility connection, and development control authority qualifications for residential and commercial use before putting the properties on the market. ISL's aim is to generate between 500 and 600 new landowners, either by development or land rationalization. At the beginning of 2019, ISL announced the Boisjoli residential development as prime residential property, approximately 8.43 acres of sloping land and compromising 25 single-unit residential lots, ranging in size from 3,800 to 8,400 square feet. The development garnered interest from the constituents of Denry and its environs and by December 2019, it was completely sold out and the new owners were handed over their lots. ISL is also looking into other initiatives that will target the middle-class spectrum, exploring options such as multifamily offerings, in which case persons can purchase the unit within a duplex or apartment complex at a lower reasonable cost. This includes the Bosha land development, which has been designated for both residential and commercial use, which makes it a very attractive option for potential landowners. The multipurpose prime property is approximately 20 acres of relatively flat land and comprising 59 lots ranging in size from 5,000 to 26,000 square feet. The lots consist of four multifamily lots, five commercial lots, two institutional lots, and 48 single-family lots. Sizes are prepared for marketing to the higher-end or middle-class buyers, especially young professionals. With five commercial lots, there are opportunities for economic activity in a development as large as the one in Beauchamp. Sales for this development were halted during the country's initial responses to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, ISL has recommended processing applications for this development and it is about 80% sold. The newest land project for ISL is the Lafag development in Chouzel. The Lafag development is another project that offers both residential and commercial use lots, ranging in size from 4,193 to 26,000 square feet. Originally, this development had an estimated completion for the first quarter of 2020. Although progress was hindered, as with most economic activity in St. Lucia, ISL is pleased to be back on track. The development will be done in four phases as opposed to the original three, and three contractors from the Schwazel area are working towards its completion. ISL will be announcing the Lafag development groundbreaking in the coming days. Anyone wishing to apply for ISL's land sales can find application forms at either its Castries or Viewfort office. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Emancipation Day is celebrated annually and commemorates the abolishment of slavery throughout the British Empire by the Slavery Abolition Act 1833, which came into effect on August 1, 1834. Chief Education Officer in the Ministry of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, Dr. Fiona Meyer, explained that it is important that the youth pays more attention to the history to understand where they came from and where they are going. The Chief Education Officer said it should be a time of reflection with the guidance of older people to appreciate who they are as inclusions and how they can move forward and benefit as a people. In commemoration of this day, the ministry is partnering with Goodwill Ambassador Tash Weeks to host an initiative. Young people out there are invited to be creative, to share a song, a bit of poetry, some art. The posters are all out there. Lots of things that young people can do. And so we want them to present those bits of creative ideas that they have upload it onto our Facebook page. We will identify what our Facebook page is and they can find those posters all over. There are age criteria. So for the younger ones, we have something in lower primary, middle primary and upper secondary as well. We just want to encourage everybody to 
think, what does emancipation mean to me as an individual, as a national of St. Lucia? And our young people, we assume you have a bit of time now on your hands. We encourage our parents to support them and to present those creative bits that can then be uploaded and can share what emancipation means to those individual children. Teachers signed to the TVET unit of the Ministry of Education, Delphia Natrum, indicated that youth aged 9 to 21 years are invited to express their thoughts on emancipation in a creative way. Creativity is encouraged and interested individuals can submit various art pieces, whether it be in the form of a painting, drawing, video art, a piece of weaving or textile print, a sculpture or craft, a song, poem, dance, a video of performance, a short story or spoken word. We're looking for young persons to really reflect on the whole idea of emancipation. Often we look forward to a lot of events, cultural events, and we want to go the sort of party sort of atmosphere to it. But we really want students to um, reflect. We know they've been out of school, formal classroom settings for quite a while. Um, a lot of them are quite creative, both in the visual and the performing arts. So. We are trying to engage them to reflect on the idea of emancipation and what it really means to them, but to do so through creative expression. Submissions must be sent to voiceandpower2020 at gmail.com. The deadline for submissions is August 15. Submissions can be made as an individual or with friends, and all are reminded to include their names, school, age, and a short description or statement on the art piece. And this is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle of We All. The effective management of the marine resources depends heavily on compliance. To ensure that these resources continue to thrive and provide the best local seafood, fishers, vendors and consumers must be aware of the fishery seasons. Here is the season chart for lobster. Adhere to the schedule. Help maintain a thriving fishing industry for all of us. This has been a message from the Department of Fisheries. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Ta Chanel, Monsieur Madame Department, qui nous responsabilité? Where from us, your government was at the sea. That's a GIS, a television national player, NTN, Cabozato Nouvelle, a Creole, Pesato, Primus Hutchinson. Depuis le 28 juillet 2020, Corporation Assemblée Nationale, c'est le sea, sans connaître première qu'au NIC, il n'est pour adresser 26,733 applications et que j'ai dépensé déjà. Yon million dollar. That's the Amba program des assistance government for moun ki pedi travail yon en resulta de maladie corona. Jawe des affaires communication an organization NIC, Mark Norton McLean, ka conseil le client e jafe application pou ver asure ki tout information yon vre an ordre. E di ki lani le employer ki jis toujou pou kon sa founi NIC e pise information ki nesese pou ede les officiers adresse effectivement tout se klema ki jafe et pour sa facilité de paiement de travail qui qualifié. McLean déclare que pour te faciliter le paiement qui client en Haïti, selon McLean, tout employé qui est supposé fournir en Haïti et puis deux ou trois informations. Et ça a placé ces employés là à sur une liste en organisation. McLean déclare que la liste là n'y a pas été 1667. Ça c'est un libre employé qui a enregistré. Et qui aussi j'ai trouvé approuvé, mais juste toujours, il n'y a pas faire pièce application travail à tout silon, je vais dans ici, ça c'est un 119. Il y a vrai aussi que les employeurs qui peuvent procurer information au mois de mai, c'est 613. Il y a aussi l'année 700 employés 
qui peut encore ouvrir l'application pour manger. Quand même, à part des 18 000 applicants qui ont trouvé assistance au paiement en ici, l'organisation a continué pour faciliter la meilleure façon pour aider les clients qui ont expérimenté les problèmes toujours. Chef groupe audit en ici, Swan Chalry Pin, explique que les clients ont reçu des bénéfices dépend à ce lot de bénéfices qui ont reçu des bénéfices. Swan Pin continue pour expliquer, par exemple, si un client a trouvé un bénéfice maternité, a dit 800 dollars, et qu'à présent, ni pour recevoir 1000 dollars bénéfice au programme d'assistance gouvernement, il y a trouvé 200 dollars seulement. Parce que 1000 dollars a déjà plus haut des bénéfices qui sont supposés à recevoir au NIC. Swan Pin a aussi conseillé les clients qui travaillent à ce code Koyo pour faire assurer, pour pouvez tirer des informations concernant les situations. Il uh, à présent, ça veut dire, si vous travaillez, si vous ne travaillez pas, pour aider NICA pour assister au primaire. Département de l'environnement de santé publique, qui a conseillé le public là, pour prendre toute précaution pour ne pas encourager les pièces d'action qui ont agendé et avec l'autre petit animaux qui s'apportent des maladies pour la santé publique. Officier qui est-ce que ça pour guider le public là, contre ces animaux là? C'est Charlotte Charles de qui ça a quand même cause toutes sortes de qualités de mauvaises maladies, particulièrement l'eptospirosis, et que ça a dangereux tout le monde. Bah, quand on voit ce qu'on a eu, parce que pour moi, pour moi, j'ai raison, on sait que ça va être malade. Ce malade comme l'eptospirosis, hunter fever, salmonellosis, um, rat bite fever, toxoplasmosis, tout ça, c'est malade, c'est quoi ça, ça va nous. Et en l'idée de cette liste, les malades sont les plus communs à la leptospirosis. Et nous, en l'idée de la santé, nous avons fait un chaita qui a éduqué les gens sur les malades. L'autre raison qui est importante pour nous, détruire la santé de la commune, c'est que nous avons fait un chaita dommage. Donc, so, dès que nous avons un warehouse, un eh ben, magasin qui a vendu des choses pour les gens. Les watts aïe mort des sacs si oui mort des sacs fait une fence si que pisser et caca en les tin lait et bail comme ça ça a ça a fait dommage bail en dedans place business mon so ça c'est des plus gros raisons on est pour nous ni pour dit détruire ouais ça dit dans comme non selon mademoiselle Charles maladie leptospirosis attaque au quand n'importe l'autre maladie même à comme c'est dit ou qu'à souffrir et puis flou et bien c'est malade ça là So, quand il y a même mal de la, la fièvre, um, de la ni relâchement, um, mal boudé, um, c'est une ça. Puis, et, de la ou senti quoi comme ça, et vous croyez que c'est um, c'est flou à on y met, c'est pas flou, c'est pas oui, c'est la petite spirosis on y. Mademoiselle Charles, qui a conseillé public là, si vous trouvez maladie la petite spirosis, Allez au tir en docteur plus vite que possible et pas point chance pour servir les médoisiers. J'ai eu pour institution pour aider à réhabiliter les jeunes garçons en société, c'est Boys Training Center, qui parle de la direction avec Jid Parwanyo, et bien Nishiz et puis Loi PIA, M. Wang Sonson, qui a fait public là comprendre que les officiers qui employent et puis l'institution Sala ont embrassé la responsabilité Sala. Pas pour un gros salaire, pas pour publicité et bien recognition, mais seulement pour passion pour assister les jeunes garçons qui méritent un haut degré de support et assistance à la vie. De une discussion à ce NTN, M. Sonson a vu que la profession de la c'est une qui n'a pas de grand bénéfice, une qui ni pour ni compassion et l'amitié pour les jeunes gens. Ou ni pour faire épice ou relever un changement en ce type de là. Okay. Mais um, c'est ce qui est venu avec nous. Ça, ça y'a pas à changer. Les gens qui ont quitté nous, ils ont allé dans le même environnement, même comme ils ont qui voulaient en nous en first place. Donc, mm -hmm. so, ici, c'est un bagage qui um, nous pas à faire un miracle. Mm -hmm. Mais mm -hmm. nous avons essayé, si nous avons changé la vie, nous avons mm -hmm. okay. nou, nou, nou fait un chai. Mm -hmm. Et quand nous avons quitté nous, pour deux ans, nous n'y avons pas eu aftercare. 
So pour deux ans, nous avons essayé d'aider vous avec le livre l'école, le uniforme de l'école. Si vous avez besoin de travail, nous avons aidé vous à acheter le travail. Mais nous n'avons pas fait tout. Donc, même comme nous, les petits boys sont sortis, ils n'ont pas pour stigmatiser ces petits boys. Ils n'ont pas pour essayer d'aider vous. Puis si nous n'avons pas aidé vous, tant pour venir, il y a un problème pour la société. Monsieur, Mesdames, dans ce côté, nous avons trouvé une nouvelle. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je ne peux pas encore. Si Dieu conserve la vie, je vous présente une nouvelle. À quoi vous avez présent? Je vous remercie pour vous présenter. Merci à Pearl Primus. Et ça nous a fait à la fin de NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. ou à repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.